if status is equal to object status dot live or active. So if our object is active, we want to perform some operations. So our fire time is equal to fire time dot subtract game time dot elapsed game time. And just like the last class, we did the same thing in the player class. This just subtracts the fire time by the elapsed game time. If fire time dot total seconds is less than or equal to zero, we can set can fire to true. Then we also set fire time dot fire time is equal to time span dot from seconds and pass it to again. Okay, so the velocity of our object is going to rely on our target. So velocity is equal to new vector to target dot position dot x minus our position dot x comma target dot position dot y minus our position dot y. And that just grabs a single point between our player and our desired enemy. A single point. Now it's very large speed wise so we need to call velocity dot normalize. And what that does is it makes the speed 1 or the length of the vector to 1 in our case it's the speed. So now we set velocity is equal to vector 2 dot multiply velocity comma speed now rotation relies on the same thing rotation relies on the angle of our vector 2 so rotation is equal to float as a cast math dot a tan this is where we use a tangent 2 this way it does a proper location it makes sure it looks a proper way we pass it our target dot position dot y minus our position dot y comma target dot position dot x minus our position dot x. Remember that just grabs a single line between our player and our desired enemy. So that line contains an angle, and we want to grab that angle and set it as rotation. And that's it for the update method. Okay, so now what we have left to do is our public static stuff. So public, we already have public static texture to the enemy texture. Now let's have this public static enemy as a return type generate enemy we want to generate an enemy in this class so that way we can do additional stuff that we will not be able to do otherwise let's pass it a viewport called view and a player p Because we want to randomize our location, as you, if you played the original code I gave you, the bullet will randomize. Sometimes it's in the top left, sometimes it's in the top middle, sometimes it's in the top right, and sometimes it's anywhere in between those. So randomize, random r is equal to new random enemy e is equal to new 
enemy will pass a P for the player. And we set E down position is equal to new vector two R dot next and we pass it zero comma viewport dot width. That creates an integer between zero and the view dot width. So the width of the game window comma R dot next. 0, comma, view dot height divided by 2. And instead of 0, let's make it negative 50 and 0 minus view dot height divided by 2. And actually, that would be the origin. So minus the origin. E dot origin dot y. Okay. So what this does is it randomizes between the location zero and the location to the far right side of the game window. And that returns an integer value. So it can appear anywhere between the width of the game window. What this does is it does the same thing, but it starts at negative 50 to the origin of our object. So it can be way up at the top, way outside the game window, and it will travel down. That way it doesn't just pop up on the screen. Now you can have it that effect if you want, but for this tutorial, I will not do that. Now since it returns an enemy, let's return E. And that's it for our enemy sprite. So next tutorial we'll build on our player sprite, we'll build upon our bullet uh, player class and bullet class. So I hope to see you next time.